Hi, my name is Tomo, and today I would like to talk about uh, a very important tool, Chainsaws. There are so much good information on YouTube. Um, if you look hard, you can find pretty much anything. However, there is not a single video that summarizes everything, uh, you know, condenses everything down to a single video. So today I'm going to try to do that. Uh, mention everything that you have to know before you get started and hopefully this is going to help you. So why chainsaws? Um, I do a lot of tree work. Uh, I tried many different type of saws. Saws all circular saw. I tried to cut logs with a miter saw before. It's just you know that these tools are not made to cut, to cut uh, wood like that. Uh, when you start running a chainsaw to do any kind of tree work, even you know when you when you do some fence work, uh, sometimes I just I just take out my chainsaw because it's easier. I don't have to worry about extension cords, things like that. A, a chainsaw is just so much more convenient to use, uh, so much more mobile and powerful. So, uh, with a chainsaw, however, comes responsibility. Chainsaw is a very dangerous tool. You have to know what you're doing. Uh, this is a huge disclaimer. Um, so, you really have to practice. Uh, you have to get started, you know, slow with slow lumber, easier, uh, easier cuts. Uh, don't try to take down a huge tree. All of a sudden, you will end up uh, smashing a roof in or stuff like that. Uh, don't do that. Start practicing. Go slow. Uh, take your time learning. It, it's a long process. Build up your confidence and, and move forward to bigger jobs. Um, there are two big types of chainsaw, uh, electric and gas operated. Um, if, you are, uh, if you only do small jobs and you don't really run your saw, for more than an hour a day, I would actually highly recommend uh, getting a, a nicer electric saw. The reason why I'm saying that because uh, a gas operated chainsaw requires a lot of maintenance. Most people don't realize that when you buy a chainsaw, um, you actually have to spend over the years a lot of time maintaining that saw. I'm going to give you a quick example gas uh, dissolves plastic so most of your fuel lines in a chainsaw will be eaten every few years i want to say at least four or five years you have to replace your fuel lines your carbs will get clogged up you have to take it apart clean it you have to tune your carb uh, all the time as your saw breaks in so it requires a lot of maintenance, a lot of know-how. A lot of people get frustrated with their chainsaw. I had a friend who gave me his gas-operated chainsaw because he couldn't really um, tune the carb correctly, and he just ended ended up giving it to me. He got frustrated. I, I tuned it, and that chainsaw is one of my best chainsaws, to be honest with you. So, um, if you if you do a, a, a small job or you have to cut down small trees every now and then, get an electric one, save yourself a headache. And uh, if you if you if you have a lot of trees, you do a lot of you know tree work things like that, you will probably end up with a gas chainsaw because they are just so much more powerful. You don't have to worry about batteries or extension cords. You can bring it to anywhere. You can use it off of a ladder whatever you can climb up to a roof you know things like that so it's just a little bit more mobile and, and definitely more powerful today we're going to mainly focus on gas chainsaws however i'm going to mention certain things about electric saws so this is a chainsaw basic parts of a chainsaw this is your bar that's where the chain runs you can see that it has some pretty aggressive teeth to cut this is a small 
14 inch chainsaw I believe so these are the these are the cutters you can see that the edge is not very nice I'm going to show you later how to sharpen your chainsaw that's the depth gauge raker uh, that's the hook the actual cutting surface you can see you know when it runs this way it's going to take a chunk of wood out uh, this is the safety switch when you move it forward that's going to lock your chain so it's not gonna that's gonna it's not gonna let it move so when you store it or you to transport it I highly uh, suggest you engage this when you are ready to run it you disengage it by pulling it back so again this is a gas operated chainsaw it has two important uh, tanks so Usually in the front you will see that the bar uh, oil tank. So what I normally do, I really like this Husky uh, X-Guard oil. You have to fill this up. I normally don't fill it up all the way, you know, you just uh, twist it counterclockwise, take it, the cap off and you, and you fill it up. I don't like it full because it tends to leak if you keep it full. The other port is your gas. Every single chainsaw, unless you're a big competitor and you have a four cycle chainsaw, they are all uh, two cycle. They all have two cycle motors. That means that you have to mix gas with two cycle oil. So one thing that you can do, you can buy one of these pre mixed uh, fuels. It's very important to know that each chainsaw has a preferred uh, mix ratio fifty. Uh, gas and then one volume of uh, two cycle engine oil so every single chainsaw has a label on it and uh, you have to put in the, the correct gas these are very expensive uh, this is uh, 32 ounce I think I ended up paying like six seven dollars for this if you buy a gallon premix, that's like twenty dollars. Very expensive stuff. So what I've been doing, I'm, I've been mixing my own fuel. Uh, so you can get uh, two cycle engine oil, and then I get ethanol free uh, gas uh, from my gas station. Luckily, they sell it, and I just mix it myself. It's very important, you know. You just do the math. Um, there are a lot of videos about that. I don't want to waste your time. And you pour that in again. I don't fill this all the way up because it tends to leak that way. So uh, very important to mention that if you have an electric saw, obviously it doesn't have a gas port. However, it does have the uh, bar oil tank. If you don't run oil, or let's say there's you know a, a little pump inside the chainsaw, if it doesn't run correctly, uh, then you can. You will wear out your your chain very fast. Uh, when I got started with chainsaws, I didn't notice I was running the chainsaw, and I never actually checked, really the never really realized that the oil for the for the chain, it didn't really go down. That means you didn't use it right, so nothing the chain didn't get looped up, and I actually broke a chain, and I almost smashed myself in the face, which is not good. So you really have to make sure that. Whenever you put gas in, that's the time when I check the bar oil and I make sure that I, I fill that up. If it didn't go down, I know I have a problem. I take the chainsaw apart and I try to figure out what's going on. The other thing that with a, with a gas chainsaw, you have to prime when you start a chainsaw, you have to uh, prime it. This is your choke and this is the switch. Every single chainsaw has different controls. I'm going to demonstrate how to start this particular chainsaw. I ran this not long ago so you can actually see that the priming bulb has gas in it when I shake it. So I don't probably need to prime it. Priming means that you actually push gas into the carburetor of the chainsaw. You have to do that. If you haven't been running your chainsaw or you just filled it up, it was empty before, you press the primer slowly two or three times. You hear that noise? It's pushing gas into the carb. And then what you have to do 
you have to choke it in this particular chainsaw. You have to pull this out. So what that does, it gives extra gas to the motor. So it's going to help you get started. So choke is out, turn on the chainsaw, and then you pull the rope. So once it, you hear that it cranked over, uh, now it, it's primed. So what you do, you take off the uh, choke and it's going to get started. It's going to rev off. It's like when you push the gas pedal to the metal in your car, it's going to go full speed. So you wait a few seconds to, go, uh, to let it go full speed so it starts to warm up the engine. And then you press the trigger that disengages the, the primer, that choke. So the throttle is going to go down and you warm up your chainsaw and then you can start doing your cutting. So, let me demonstrate. important when you operate a chainsaw you always do full throttle when you cut something you, you squeeze the trigger all the way and you don't just you know let it rev up a little bit that's gonna that's gonna clog up your engine it's not good for the um, for the engine chainsaws are binary go full throttle or full idle nothing in between you have to remember very important thing chainsaw uh, chain tension you have to constantly adjust it. This is true for electric chainsaw also. You have to do this. If you don't do it, if your chain is too saggy, then what happens when you start cutting, the chain is going to roll over the tip and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out from the bar and you can actually end up cutting yourself. So there is a tensioner with this chainsaw. What you do, you loosen these two nuts with a half an inch socket. And then there's a screw here, you take a flat head and you uh, turn that clockwise, that's going to put tension on the bar. And once you're ready, you know, to tighten these screws down that really hold the bar, what you do, you push down the tip, you put it on a piece of surface or something, and then you tighten these screws. Uh, you can look it up yourself in other videos. So you have to do this even on an electric saw. The tension that I like is... You know, when I pull this down with about, I don't know, 5, 10 pounds of force, the, the chain barely leaves the edge of the bar. That's, that's good tension. If uh, you have a longer chainsaw, you have to know. That's why people actually think that uh, a longer chainsaw is way safer than a short one. You have to constantly adjust the chain if you have a short bar because it, it doesn't give. A longer bar actually gives a lot so what that means it, it tolerates a loose chain it's not gonna jump off so uh, you can actually if you have a longer bar you don't have to always you know tinker with the chain so I actually recommend getting a longer uh, bar
So this side is the undercut. You cut out a V-shaped uh, piece. And I usually go like one third in if the tree doesn't lean. One third is usually a really good way to do that. Uh, you make a perfect V. I took the excess piece that wasn't perfect. So it's called a Dutchman. I, I take it out from here and what were you thinking there? And once that is done, once that is cleaned out, I put in this cut. So this is what's called the hinge. You have to be very careful uh, not to bust any side. This has to be a perfectly parallel uh, hinge. Otherwise, uh, the tree, when it comes down, it's going to twist. So that is very important. You, 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 you cut in and then uh, you try to keep the same height as the undercut and that's how you do it. Another important thing, once the tree is on the ground you have to talk about compression. Compression is a very important thing that not a lot of people understand and they struggle with chainsaws. Compression is when you have a piece of wood on the ground and let's say it's in the air, right? This is this is a branch coming from a tree and you want to cut it right here. So this this side is hanging in the in the air. Compression is the underside, right? Because it wants to compress it. So every time when you cut something, you always start with the compression side. So if this one is in the air, you put a small undercut here. Uh, you, you put an undercut here on the bottom side and then you cut the top so you know when this one starts to fall it doesn't grab your bar that's the compression let's say the tree falls down like this this is the tree side this is the branch side so now it actually wants to go up right because it, it presses like that so then the compression is the top side so you put a small uh, undercut in on the top and then you cut the bottom so it doesn't grab your blade. A lot of people struggle with this. You do have to understand this. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of problems. I'm going to demonstrate it real fast. Over here. Uh, this particular one doesn't have a whole lot of big branches because it's already dead. But I'm going to demonstrate. So the first cut I'm going to do is going to be the, you know, the thing hanging. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to cut the compression side, the bottom side first, and then I do the top so it doesn't grab my blade. So that's how I do this. However, when I start cutting this, because it wants to go like this, the compression side is going to be the bottom. So I'm going to cut the bottom. Just, uh, sorry, uh, the top first, because that's the compression side, right? And I'm going to finish it on the bottom. So that's how you do that. You do have to understand compression. good of a chain you buy 
you're gonna have, have to end up you're gonna end up uh, sharpening it for sure uh, it's gonna dull out you're gonna hit steel or just regular tear uh, and bear uh, it's gonna dull out so that's why you know I usually hand file everything I just have regular file uh, and this is a, a bigger chain this is a 3 8 pitch uh, chain that means uh, every link is a 3 16th of an inch wide uh, you have to check the spec of your chainsaw uh, see what kind of chain you have so um, the reason why I hand file you can buy grinders and things like that I feel like I have better control with the hand file and it's cheaper and faster on the field you don't have to carry big equipment around because I hand file I don't have a square ground chain I have the regular hooked you know hook profile chain how I normally sharpen it I always use my vise I degrease the chain uh, because once you get oil on your file, it's gonna wear out faster. So do yourself a favor. Don't screw up like me I didn't know uh, I had oil on the chain and it, it dulled my file out uh, After just one sharpening. I don't do a fixed amount of stroke uh, This chain has an angle You kind of have to learn the <clears throat> angles Yourself you can see there's a laser mark. So I, I try to keep that if your chain doesn't have that, <clears throat> a 30 degree angle is usually perfect. What I normally do, I grab it kind of lightly, and when I push, you know, from this side, I twist. So I deburr the chain. I don't use a lot of force. So if I had to put a number on it, anywhere between 5 or 15 strokes, you can get a dull chain sharpened. So... I usually the force that I apply I usually pull backwards and I don't push down for sure maybe I use a little bit of force to to bring it up a little bit because I don't want to go deep with the file so let me let me you see how the 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 chain comes up you can engage the brake if you wanted to and you twist you try to keep the same angle that's pretty much how the sharpening goes once you're ready to go to the next you pull it back And you go to the next one. Once well, this side is uh, completely done, usually put people put a marker, you know where they got started. But you're gonna you're gonna be able to tell the difference. You're gonna be able to tell where you started. The other side, pretty simple, goes like this. Nothing fancy. Just a nice little hook. After some time. You have to adjust the depth gauge or the raker. It's that guy. Uh, there are all kinds of tools to do that. Also, that's more advanced. We don't. We are not going to talk about that. Uh, you have to keep your chain very sharp. Very important. The other important aspect of running a chainsaw is safety. This is a very dangerous tool. My advice to anybody who is trying to use a chainsaw first of all you have to be comfortable with your chainsaw if your chainsaw is too big uh, you're gonna have an accident you have to get the right size chainsaw whatever you feel comfortable using usually people think that a smaller chainsaw is safer and that is unfortunately not true it's kind of uh, counterintuitive a longer bar actually is more more forgiving the chain doesn't tend to jump off that easy so a chainsaw with a longer bar is usually safer but it's also heavier so you have to find the right balance the second very important thing is that if you feel tired 
or angry, you know, you are not in a good mood, you don't have a clear head, don't use a chainsaw. I cut myself about two years ago with a chainsaw while it was running, my kneecap, I'm not going to put a picture on here because uh, it was kind of graphic. And um, yeah, I didn't have the right mindset that day. I was talking to my wife, I wasn't focusing and I nicked my kneecap. So it wasn't very good. So that's, that's the biggest advice. Um, you know, you can buy all kinds of safety equipment. I'm going to add some links to the description. I have a nice husky hat with a screen to protect my safe, uh, protect my face in case the the chain ever you know jumps off or anything like that and you can buy these pants i have a husky brand those are i think the cheapest the best bank for your buck the cheapest and most durable uh equipment and i have a husky chain so uh, the other thing that you uh, have to be aware of when you buy, you know, a chainsaw, I usually uh, tell people that your first chainsaw should be a very cheap one uh, because you're going to mess it up no matter what. So I buy used. Uh, that's what I did. And uh, what you have to do is uh, when you buy a chainsaw, you have to test it. You don't know what you're getting. There are a lot of different ways to um, determine if your chainsaw is a good one or not. So this is a much smaller Echo chainsaw. The most important thing that you have to check is the condition of the engine. That's the most important thing. You can get, you know, a chain, you can get a bar, you can get a muffler, you can get all kinds of stuff very cheap. But if your engine is screwed, there's no point in saving or using that chainsaw. The best way to tell if your chainsaw is good, a compression test. So when you pull on a chainsaw, you hear this? And the, the more, more you pull, more compression it builds up, and the, host, the, the harder it becomes to pull on the rope. The chainsaw with a pretty bad compression, it just goes. You don't, you don't really feel any, any resistance. Some people, they do this test. You know, if the compression is enough to hold the chainsaw like that, and this is a good one.